What can I do for you, occupational therapy student? Do you have time to review, edema, control with me, occupational therapy professor? Very well. First tell me, what is, edema? Okay, edema is, swelling. Sometimes caused by, fluid retention. Sometimes caused by, trauma. Like an injury, or, an, insult to the body. Or, it might be caused by, inactivity, like when a person is confined to a bed following surgery. Let's talk about the type of edema that is caused by fluid retention. What might cause that? Well, the person's kidneys may not be functioning as well as they should. The kidneys are responsible for removing fluid from the body's blood and passing it out through the bladder. If the kidney function is poor enough, the person may need to go to dialysis. Go on. What other causes may be responsible for edema? Let's say lower extremity, edema. Edema of the legs, handles, and feet. Well, a sedentary lifestyle for one thing. Too little activity. Couch potato syndrome. Or spending days or weeks in a hospital bed following an accident, a surgery, or perhaps even a stroke. Anything else? Yes. Poor circulation of the lower extremities can also cause edema especially when combined with prolonged sitting or standing or lying in bed. Poor circulation is often associated with smoking cigarettes, but it could also be hereditary or related to a diet high in fat. You have forgotten one very common cause of poor circulation of the extremities. Can you think what it might be? Oh yes. Thank you. Diabetes. Diabetes is often associated with poor blood circulation of the hands and feet. This can also be accompanied by neuropathy, which is nerve damage. So, a person with diabetes often has swollen feet and may report that their feet are numb or painful. Good. Now, as an occupational therapist, what would you include in your treatment plan for a person with severe, lower extremity, edema? Well, I would provide patient and family education regarding edema control and management. Good. We will come back to that. What else? Positioning to promote edema reduction. Okay. Especially if the patient is non-mobile. But if they are mobile, what intervention can you provide? Short walks, as long as it is safe. Elevating leg rests for their wheelchair, if they spend much time in a wheelchair. And, pillows, or cushions, under their calves when they are in a chair or in bed. Right? Also, I can recommend pressure garments like Ted Hose. That would require a doctor's order. Good. Good. Now let us go back to patient and family education. Elaborate on that, please. Well, edema control measures can be more effective for some people than for others. What works best for one person may be less effective for someone else. The physician may prescribe a diuretic to help the kidneys remove or be more effective in removing fluid from the body. Okay but there may be reasons that a diuretic would not be used. Leave that. Conversation to the doctor. Okay? Okay. Then, there are five things a patient and or family member can do to help reduce edema. Ah. Now we get to the meat of the matter. Go ahead. 1. The first and most effective thing to do is to elevate the feet. When lying in bed, they can be propped up on pillows or a cushion. If they are in a hospital bed, the foot of the bed can be elevated. Elevation is most effective when the feet are above the heart. Gravity helps move the fluid down the legs and back into the body, where the kidneys can then remove the fluid from the body as urine. 2. Active movement. Get the muscles of the lower legs working to help squeeze the fluid back into the veins so it can be carried back toward the body. Ankle pumps are easy and effective for this. Point your feet and toes all the way down, then bring the feet and toes up, toward the head. Do this gently, don't strain. Do this over and over again. The more the better. Right. Elevation and active movement, combined, are the two most effective things a patient can do for himself to reduce edema. We are running out of time. Your next class begins in a few minutes. Finish, please. Okay. 3. Pressure garments, 
like tight stockings, Ted hose or even ace bandages. If an ace wrap is used, start the wrap at the toes and work up, over the foot and ankle, and up the calf. Right. 4. Contrast baths. Soaking the feet in cold water, then warm water, then cold water. Cold water causes the fluid to leave the tissues of the feet and legs, and move upward toward the vital organs. Okay. Elaborate on contrast baths, to me, please. Okay. Begin by placing the foot, or feet, in cold water, for one to three minutes. Then move the foot, or feet, to very warm water, not hot water, for about five minutes. Then return to the cold water for one to three minutes. Then the warm water. Then back to cold water. Do this for about 20 minutes total. Good. And number five? Number five is, uh, uh. Oh yes. Retrograde massage. Massage from toes to thighs. Always toward the heart. Every single stroke should be upward, toward the heart. Use lotion to reduce friction, and massage toward the heart for 10 to 20 minutes per extremity. Good. And finally. Contra indications. When should any of these techniques be avoided? Hmm. Well? Okay. Let me ask it this way. Is there ever a time that a person may not want to lay in bed with their feet elevated above their heart? I guess I'm not sure. This is important. If a person has congestive heart failure, there is a buildup of fluid around their heart. Raising the legs above the heart could cause even more fluid to enter the chest cavity and could make the condition worse. Now I remember. I should have remembered that. How about retrograde massage? When might that be a problem? I remember this one. If the person has a deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot in the leg, then massaging the leg may not be a good idea because it may cause the blood clot to move toward the heart. That would not be a good thing. Right. There are a few more details we might discuss, but you have done an excellent job of summarizing edema control as it relates to occupational therapy. Thank you, occupational therapy professor. I love occupational therapy and can't wait to be a therapist. Now I have class and must run. Have a good day, occupational therapy student. I believe you will be a great occupational therapist.